Hi guys, it's your girl Keisha Hutch. And if you like this look that I'm showing you right now, stay tuned to watch this video. Okay, let's get started. I have already prepped my face. I washed it, I deep cleansed it. I moisturized it. I had on, what are these wonderful things? Peace out puffy eyes underneath because I've been crying a lot lately and I just needed a little bit extra assistance today. All those things are already on my face. Now I'm just going to prime my face with the Pacifica Matte Greens. And this was one of the products that came up on the Yucca app as being clean. I did see a video on TikTok that was very interesting when they were talking about primers to use. And there are two different types of primers. You can use silicone base to go with your silicone based products, or you can use water base. And this is a water based primer. And my foundation that I'm going to use is also water based. I'm not going to put it on my eyelids because I don't really want them to be matte. I'm going to pack on some foundation on them as my base for a little eyeshadow. Let me just rub this in. I like to rub it in on my neck too because I will take the foundation down to my neck. I like to spread it all evenly. Let that soak in. How I prep my skin before I did this, I put on a little bit of Cetaphil moisturizer, some rose water. I always love to put on the rose water because I heard it's supposed to help like even out your skin tone and all those type of things. So. That's pretty much what is on my skin currently. Some rose water and some Cetaphil primer. Now that I've, some Cetaphil moisturizer. Now that I've primed with the Pacifica Matte Greens, by the way, this video is not sponsored at all. Everything I've paid for myself, including the Yuka app, that wasn't a sponsorship either. It's just a product that I love to use so much, I figured I might as well go ahead and show you all how I'm getting these products how I'm picking, choosing clean products. Okay, so I have my primer on my skin. I'm gonna get my little poof thingy. I have started to like using the poof for applying foundation better than the foundation brush. Uh, if I have to be honest about that. And I'm still using the Kosas. Well, I wasn't using Kosas last time I made a video, which was a while ago. But I switched to Kosas, which is the clean foundation I wanted to go ahead and start using. There's another one, Sai. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. S-A-I-E. I like them as well, but I didn't try their foundation. I tried, I went with the Kosas because the Kosas has a stronger formula, closer to... It seems like you can build it up to be full coverage for all the girlies that love full coverage makeup. But since I just put this on, put this out here, I'm gonna actually put this underneath my eyes, kind of like a color corrector so I can help out, like when I'm tired, just kind of eliminate the purple cast situation going. So let me do that real quick since I already have it out here. Since I see the more brown skin girls will use like the gold highlighter, something more gold looking to color correct before they put their foundation on, which is kind of the same thing. Just, you know, if you're more fair skinned like I am. Okay, that's just to help it out a little bit. I think I got it all in. <laughs> I hope so, because I'm going to check in my other mirror soon. I'm going to bring this light a little closer. I just don't want it to be too harsh of shadows when I'm recording. Let me fix that real quick. Okay. So I've got that going. This is also a clean product. I picked this up from Sephora. This one is from Target. It's, it's pretty much between mostly Target and Sephora that I get the products. The Kosas is also from Sephora and a nice young lady in there matched me for the highlighter because I end up going back, well, not highlighter, concealer. I ended up going back and getting the concealer and I just asked her to get me one shade above what the color is she recommended for me. And that is a 90. 
That's the number I'm using. I believe it's a 90. I'm sorry. It's a six. I read that wrong. <laughs> I think the color she recommended for me was a seven. But I asked her for a shade lighter and she gave me the number six. And that's what the concealer is that I'm going to be using. Because I don't like my concealer to be super bright on my skin. I know it's trendy and it's cool and all that good stuff. I'm just not with the concealer that looks three shades lighter than than your foundation. I just think it should be a little bit closer match. Like to me, this color right here for the foundation is a little too light. I would prefer it to be like a couple shades darker. And I did, this color is a, I think it's a 280. Yep, 280 tan neutral. And I had, I ordered the 320 but the 320 looked almost the same. So if there's one criticism I have for Colossa is that the number scale, it's really not that much difference between the numbers. Like you would think from 280 to 320, the color would have been more pigment or more brown of a color, but it wasn't. It was, it was such a faint difference that I just didn't even waste the time. Plus the 321 I purchased actually expired before this color did, so. And all I'm doing is I just keep pumping the foundation on the sponge and pressing it into the skin just because I like how this looks better than the foundation brush. Now if the foundation brush is your thing, I get it, continue to use it use your tools however you want to use your tools whatever is most comfortable for you and if you see me moving fast it's because I am moving fast I'm on the clock <laughs> I have some errands to run and one of those errands is getting my passport picture taken and that's pretty much why I'm putting makeup on because otherwise I wouldn't have put makeup on just to run errands. I would have just walked out the house with some lip gloss on. But because I'm doing passport pictures, I want it to look nice since you can't smile in the pictures. They don't like you to show your teeth or wear glasses or all of those things. This is the part I was talking about. If you just bring the foundation down to your neck, if you got like some scarring like I do, just want to make everything look nice and smooth. And I just like to tap, tap, tap and blend everything in. Make it nice and moisturized. I also have like these bags, but I've had these bags since I was a baby. That's just how <laughs> my under eye area looks in general so it's just my thing i just like to color correct the area since it has like a purple cast because i haven't been sleeping well and a whole bunch of other things have been going on so i'm just trying to correct that issue and i right now on my lips i just have on some eos lip gloss well lip balm it's not gloss I am going to finish with a gloss though just because since I changed my hair color so light again I feel like a lot of lip colors don't really match my tone anymore the undertones that are happening with this color so I'm just it actually just looks better keeping it simple with a gloss I'm just pressing in everything all over again Looking for a nice, smooth finish. I like to take the foundation up to my hairline. Like I said, I, I'm going to try a different color of this Kosas because I like a more tan look, but it's fine because I'm, I'm going to go in and create a tan look anyway with my bronzer. I use a, pro a powdered bronzer for my finish. 
but I just like to make sure I'm pressing it in the skin. You can also damp your sponge ahead of time just to make the product stretch. I didn't dampen my sponge. But I feel like it's going to last because I put on the primer anyway. I pretty much just keep pressing it in. I'm just going to do a little bit more on my jawline. And a little bit here to help out the discoloration on my cheek. Another reason why I like the sponge more than the foundation brush is because I feel like I can see the streaks of the foundation brush. Versus just tapping in the sponge like this, it looks smoother. It looks like a more even finish, in my opinion. Okay. I think I've got everything covered. Doubling back for these eyes because I have super oily lids. They're always going to be super oily like that, but it's fine. Now, this is where I will come in with my concealer, which is a shade above what she matched me. She matched me at a seven, but she gave me the six because I asked her for a concealer that was one shade above my complexion. So I'm just going to Put my dots down. And no, I didn't do like the heavy swatching because for me, I feel like concealer is really noticeable and I don't like to put on too much. I don't want it to be so, so much contrast for the concealer between, between the concealer and the foundation. So I'm just gonna work this in. And I do like that it picks up the eyes and makes the eyes look instantly refreshed. And you can tell by the consistency, it's a nice consistency. One thing I will say for comparison, like if you're comparing the water-based products to silicone, like they were talking about at, at, on TikTok, the equivalent of this, in my opinion, would be the Tarte, but the Tarte is even a stronger appearance. I like that the Kosas is um, a thick formula, but it's not so thick and globby as the Tarte is. But you know, if you like the heavier full coverage, you're gonna like Tarte, because I like the Tarte too. But when I was using the Tarte, I was using a silicone primer as well. I was using the Mary Kay primer, which was silicone based. And literally not only did that primer last all day, it also, for someone like me that sweats a lot, it definitely made you look less sweaty. So it was definitely a game changer in the summertime. And it's about to be summer. Like it's already warm, getting warm out here in Georgia right now. And it's only middle of April, so. But just keep that in mind. You have to match your, if you're using water-based foundation, you have to use water-based primer. And if you're using silicone-based primer, you have to use silicone-based foundation or else they won't agree and they'll cake up. And I actually had that happen to me. And when it happened to me, I didn't know why they weren't mixing well together. It's because I was using the Tarte silicone-based concealer with my water-based foundation. And if I can remember what that TikTok video is, <laughs> I will definitely tag it in here. I might have added it to my favorites, so I'll be able to look back and see and tell you guys. I think I'm going to do one more layer of concealer underneath. Let me just fix this right here. Another thing, too, for my baggies, people like me, like if you sleep on your stomach, it's the worst. <laughs> It's the worst, guys. I tried to sleep on my back, but it, 
I always end up rolling right back on my stomach and that does not help. Like even the lady that I went to to get my eyebrows done a couple of weeks ago, the brow benefit lady at uh, Ulta, she's like, oh, do you sleep on this side? She could tell because this brow is thinner than that brow and just the way it was. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, if I turn on my side, it's always on this side and she could tell the difference. I'm just going to put a little bit more a little, little bit more underneath there. Concentrating under there. Now, will you have to be doing all of this? I don't, I don't think you will. Especially if you're younger and you're taking care of your skin. This is just extra steps that I have to do because I'm over 35, <coughs> over 40. And like I said, I sleep on my stomach. I'm not as hydrated as I should be right now. And all of those things show up on your face. All of those things show up on your face. I'm just going around my eye one more time again. The irony is you do all this just to look <laughs> like you didn't do all this. And that is the funny part. I'm going to do very one very, 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 very thin line. Just really, really thin right there. And we're done with this. I've seen some other ladies put it like here and here too. I'm not sure if it, I haven't really done it. I can try it, but I'm not gonna lie and be like, that's my go-to. <laughs> it's really not, the above the Cupid's bow and the chin is not really my go-to to highlight these areas. Okay, so now that I've gotten to this part, what I typically like to do next is line my lips. I'm looking for my lip liner. And I've kind of moved away from using browns. So you see I have like a bunch of Mary Kay browns still. But any brown lip liner would do, but I am into the neutral pinks now. Just because, like I said, it seems to be what looks the best with this ginger here. So, let's get my line going. Let's make them nice and thick. Just come over it one more time so it can last. And that is that for now. This is like a peachy color. This is Mary Kay Coral. My undertones are peach, so that's why I try to stick with those type of colors. Wow. Time is going, guys. I thought I was doing so great on time, but I'm really not. <laughs> Let me try to pick up the pace. Next thing I'm going to do, since I just did all of that, is I'm going to, I'm looking for my eyeshadows. I'll be right back. I think I forgot them. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Got the Honest Beauty palette. It had a clean Yucca rating. You can pick up any palette you like, but this is what I picked up because it was the only thing I could get at Target real quick when I was back in Maryland. You can see I broke it. <laughs> this is what happens when you're traveling. But it's just a neutral palette with browns. It's got a little smoky situation or light, but I'm staying far away from the smoky. I'm just looking to put down some neutral, neutral pink situation. 
on my eyes really quickly. Just gathering up my brushes. Cool. I think that's, nope. That's the brush. Okay, now I have all my tools. I'm going to use this thicker Real Techniques one so I can press down really into there and I'm gonna use the this pink shimmer color. I don't know what it's called. And I just like that on top of the concealer, it makes it pop out even more so it looks real nice and light, like a real fresh face. Like a good everyday situation. I'm going to do the same thing to the other eye. Now, if it was full on summertime and you're like, oh, I'm looking for more coverage and all those things, I would definitely layer this makeup. I would spray it down right now as it is with the Sephora Makeup Setting Spray. This had a clean rating or any setting spray. I used to use the Morphe spray ones. I love the matte Morphe one, but what I noticed is when it would come to running low in the container it would start to spatter on your face and you couldn't really fix the spatter so then i transitioned to the morphe spray one that wasn't matte but i love the way the matte look the matte spray looks when you're over 35. it's a nice finish because you know most people over 35 really aren't trying to go for that oily the dewy look, which might work with someone that's younger, but I mean, I guess it's to each his own, to each his own. But if you wanted to layer up, you could just like, this is where you would stop and spray your entire face and go in again with some more foundation on your sponge and do a whole other round. But I am not doing that because today this to me is more than enough to show up on a passport picture more enough it's to me it's definitely already going to create so much dimension to the look yeah that's more than bright enough in my opinion just double checking my work up close I do want to put a little just a little brown on the end so I'm going to go with the well, I guess pinky brown, the pink beside it. Just for a little bit more dimension. And just kind of pack that on on the end. And I guess a good rule of thumb, I think I've seen some other influencers do, is to stop the dark color where your the perimeter of your eye is. At the beginning of, what is this? your iris starts. So not the half of the eyeball, but more like a third of your eyeball in. It's a good way to stop with the color. I do have slightly hooded eyes. You can see that they fold over, but the color is still visible. So it's not too big of a problem, but you can bring the color up a little higher if you want to. I don't want to bring it too high because I like the area underneath my brow to still look nice and bright. Now with the other side of this same brush, I'm just gonna like dust off that color and then go in 
with this light color on the bottom to soften this up when I'm blending it so it's not so harsh. Because I don't like the harsh 80s look. Now, if it's controlled and you can control it, cool, but I'm not going for a hard look. I'm going for something that looks soft and everyday. And that definitely just helped it out. Looks much better in my opinion. Let me do the other side now. The same, just went in with the lighter color. And smoothing that out. Now, I know I could have used it underneath my brow bone, but I don't want to use it underneath my brow bone. I want to use the Fenty Banana Powder underneath the brow bone to create some more dimension. Okay, that looks really good. I also have a very thin old MAC brush. You guys see how old this brush is? I'm just going to dip a little bit of the this brown right here on there just to create like a little it's not a wing but a little bit more dimension underneath the illusion of a wing because I've been trying to do wing for a long time and I realized wing the wing shape does not fit my eye it makes me look older it dates me so I have abandoned using the black line for the wing. And it really only worked when it was super thin and short. But I, it's like I had to learn to control my hand to not go so high up, because the higher up I take it is the more old fashioned it looks. What if I do short strokes like this with the, with the brush? It looks fine. It looks fine. It's, and it's also easier if I start to line part of the bottom lid first before I attack the top part of the lid. It's just easier. It's just an easier strategy. Okay, so now that I have a decent wing, I need to just go in and clean up, if you will, underneath this area. It'd be easier to do with like a, a Q-tip, or if you put like down some tape underneath your eye. I don't really like the tape though, to be honest with you. But actually, I do have something for that already. I have one of these double-sided this spoofy morphe thing spoofy on one side and I like to put the concealer and then clean it up so that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to put a little well I'm going to use a little bit of foundation I actually want to make my concealer stretch <laughs> since there's a lot more foundation than concealer I'm just going to put a little dab on the brush and draw a nice line let me get that mirror back so I can see what I'm doing You see that I'm just drawing it downwards. Same thing on this side is a little too long though, so I'm going to Tone that down. Okay, now they're looking the, the way I want them to look. So let me just blend that out. Okay. 
This is what always makes me take so long is insisting on getting this stupid wing. <laughs> if I would abandon the wing, I could save five minutes on this routine. That's fine. I will take it. Okay, I'm just thinning out the end of it because I don't like how thick it looked. I like when the ends look thin and then it gradually gets thicker. So yeah, that's pretty much what I have right now, guys. That looks the way I want that to look. Gonna make my eyes big so I can press in the folds. And now is the time for me to use the super fluffy real techniques 402 brush and the what is this? The fancy, I think I called it the butter. I don't I really know. I'm not sure what the color is 100 percent to be honest. Banana. <laughs> Apologies. So many different names across different brands. The banana powder. Okay, let's tap some off in my little lid cover. You can see I had, <laughs> had a bunch on there, but I like to go underneath the eye and press that in. This is another thing that looks so bad with the tart, like when you mix the silicone concealer with water-based foundation, then you try to go on top of it with the powder. It looks terrible. Absolutely terrible. So this is to set that in. Gonna do the same thing for the other eye. Some more banana powder. Okay, it's looking pretty good. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to use some of the banana powder for underneath my brow bone. Let's brush up my brows real quick. With this um, Morphe M452, they don't make these anymore. This, this one brush, I don't know why. This is like the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> it showed me how to take my eyeshadow blending to a completely different level. Like when you come back like this, underneath your brow bone and your shadow it just makes everything look so nice and so soft and so smooth it's a nice seamless blend and when i bought this brush i bought multiples because i was thinking oh i'm gonna be doing a lot of people's makeup i didn't <laughs> but i'm glad i bought three of them because this really is like my favorite eyeshadow brush it just softens out the look of everything when you're blending. Nothing looks too harsh. That is fantastic. Now that I got that going, I am going to be a little extra and set the rest of my face with this powder, which is light in my opinion. It's the Sephora Matte Powder Foundation. This had a good clean rating too. And this is the Sephora Matte Powder Foundation in the 17Y. So you can see the color, it's fair, but like I said, I'm going to go over my face with bronzer. This is the Real Techniques 201. I'm just gonna give it a swirl. Tap, tap, tap. Swirl it all over. Give it another swirl. Get that extra off of there. Just blend it in all over. One more swirl for this side of my face. 
now you see I don't look so shiny anymore as I was just looking. All right, so that's that for that. Let me eyebrow pencil. I haven't done this in a couple weeks because my eyebrows were still looking good in my opinion with the Benefit Brown, but this is a brunette pencil. This happens to be Mary Kay. You guys know I used to sell Mary Kay like four years ago. So I still have a lot of the products. But any brunette pencil, just because I don't like the ones that are too dark. I used to like the darker pencils, but and what I would do is I would save the darkness towards like this part of my eyebrow, the last bottom 50% of my brow, because I like to see the contrast between the brunette and the dark brunette. It's your preference. And to me, this is the easy way to fill in the brows. I also have brow gel around here somewhere that to me is more like a super glam look like if I had to go to a banquet some formal function like a wedding or a gala or something I would break out the eyebrow gel but this is just every day for the passport picture you can see the dip I can see the difference already just by Penciling in this little bit of brow, how it's filled in the brows, makes them look more full, all that good stuff. Now let's do this other brow. Guys, this brow has always been on the struggle compared to this brow. This brow has been my good brow since college. <laughs> and for full disclosure, I used to pluck my brows. That was a big mistake I had to do it over again I guess I would just let someone initially razor them or just well not even razor because razor leaves um, these bump marks depending on your skin texture and I have that type of skin texture so I would have just started off with waxing and just gotten them waxed once in a while and left them full because I, I actually do like full brows I don't like them to be too thin because to me, back in the day, we used to see people with their thin brows. It looked like they were upset all the time. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to walk around looking upset. And it just, it's just a more youthful look when the brow is fuller. In my opinion. Okay. But I did let my tails grow out so that... They can just have a fuller appearance. And for a while, I had stopped letting them grow out. I, had, I was shaving them off for like a more angular look. But I'm just going back to what naturally fits my face. I do envy the people that could do the angular shape with their brows. But it's it just doesn't fit. It's not that it doesn't fit my face. It's... This is what my face is naturally doing. So I'm embracing what my face is naturally doing. So now that we got the brows done, the eyes are done. We're just going to, I'm going to do the blush, the bronzer, a little bit of bronzer in here. And then I'm going to put on mascara last. So let's do that. Let us do the brush. Got the blush brush. And this is, this is a sculpting brush, Real Techniques 401. It doesn't say it's for blush, but I use it for blush. And I noticed that some people like to do their blush really big. I prefer mine a little smaller. So I'm just really patting this in. This is the Honest Beauty Cream Blush. I think it's some sort of peach. It's a coral peach. Like I said, I have peach undertones, so that's... I don't really deviate from the undertones. I think when you find out what your undertones are, you should stick with it as best as possible. So it seems like I'm doing too much right now, but the color is a nice light color, and I'm going to go on top of it with 
bronzer anyway. Okay, I'm going to go on top of this with the bronzer anyway. You guys, this is a long video. This is supposed to be like 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am sorry. Patting that in real good. You can see I use this. <laughs> you can tell I, this is my my go-to. <laughs> And I like to press it in, take it upward, but yeah. There's this really awesome style that I saw on TikTok and this girl, she did two drops of orange and two drops of hot pink. And when I tell you her blush turned out fire, do I think I can pull that off? Not really, <laughs> but on her, it looked, it looked amazing, so. All right, we are blushed up with the cream blush. Nice and pressed into our skin. And I'm going to use hmm, my fluffy brush. Here we go. It's an old Mary Kay blush. I, I think this is supposed to be for, oh, it's called all over powder. But I, I like to use this for the loose blush. So I'm putting two blushes on top. The first one is this L'Oreal True Match. I'm not in love with it, but it's all right because it's really not about this one. It's really about the one that I put on after this one. And it's called Super Blendable. It just says Super Blendable Blush in NF6. The color is called Apricot Kiss. So I just take my fluffy, pat it down, shake off the extra. Just pack that on. Same thing on the other side. Cool. Now let me put on my bronzer, which I love this bad boy. Where's my bronzer at? Oh, it's right in front of my face. This is the Well People. This is at Target. Well, some Targets. All Targets don't sell the Well People. I didn't know that. But I think I ordered this online because they, I was just trying it to see how it it worked because they didn't have it at my local target this one is called golden hour that's the color for this one but i love the well people like when i'm not using the mary Kay brow pencil i also use the well people eyebrow pencils because they have eyebrow pencil in like a a reddish tone which sometimes i want my eyebrows to be like more red because before I bleached it to this color, it had a more red tone to my hair and it matched better in my opinion without me having to permanently change the color of my brows. Let's see, I'm just looking for the other one. So I use the same brush I just used, the same exact brush number, Real Techniques Powder Brush 201. I have more than one of them, so I'm using the same Real Techniques 201, a different exact identical brush, swirling this around some tapping off you just want to use this with a very light hand because this bronzer shows up pretty quickly it shows up pretty quickly so you don't want to go like crazy with it a little swirl Sorry, my sister's calling. <laughs> so there is that. It's getting to where I wanted to look. You know, one thing that's always irritating, for some reason, this jaw always shows up more blush than this one. It, it's the same exact technique I use. I don't know why it always does that. So what I might do is I might hit this side with a little loose powder or something. Just to tone it down. I like to kind of just swirl a little bit of this action. I'm just trying to rub it in some more to tone it down. Because right here it's looking kind of a little bit intense to me. But I think we are good on the bronzing 
front. I feel like I'm seeing dimension. My face doesn't look two dimensional anymore. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do clear mascara on my bottom lashes. Cause it drives me crazy to see the black like mess up my application. I don't want to mess anything up. I don't have any time to mess anything up right now, guys. Okay. That is the clear mascara on the bottom lashes. Most clear mascaras have a clean rating. This is Wet n Wild. I typically wouldn't use Wet n Wild products because a lot of them don't have clean ratings, but the clear mascara has a clean rating. Let's see. I think I was talking about doing a little itty bitty contour. I think I'm gonna use this eyeshadow brush right here, clean it off. Using this brush to clean it off, just dust that off so I can dip some more bronzer on there for my eyes to create a little light contour. Remember I said this 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 stuff is serious. So you don't want to go like crazy with it. You just want to draw just a little soft line. You don't need to go heavy handed because it, it really shows up. Just want to create a little contour, not too heavy of a contour. Then kind of like smooth it out so it doesn't look like a harsh line. Same thing on the other side. I'm gonna have to put some gloss on and fix these lips, guys. I just like to put the liner down first so it gets a chance to seep into the lip color. And yeah. Soften that up. I'm doing little circular motions to help it out. Make it look soft. I feel like I need to do this one side one more time then, just because I just went a little hard on this side. <laughs> and then I'm going to go back to this one with the banana, the Fenty banana powder on it, and just kind of like take it down just a notch. Okay, that looks better. Let me check my other mirror just to make sure. Oh, yeah, that's fine. It's a little extra on my left. You're right, but it doesn't it doesn't look bad. Um, and the blush actually looks the same on both sides. I guess I could hit it with a little bit more goose powder. If I can find <laughs> Okay, I see it. Just a little bit more of this one. Just to take it down just a little bit. But in general, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. So this is the part where I'm just going to lightly spray my face. Because I want to spray it before I put the mascara on or gloss on. Lightly sprayed some setting spray. Let's put on my mascara. This one is my go-to mascara. Now, I did try the Honest Beauty mascara. Hated it because the Honest Beauty mascara has a tendency to run. And you better not cry. 
Because that thing will be leaking all over the place. Before you even cry, just even sweating, that thing will be smudging. So I found this other one, which is a highly rated Ilia, I-L-I-A. And I love this one because the bristles, one side is short. And you can see this side underneath is long, like an actual comb. And I like to try to use the comb underneath. And for the girlies who have lashes, more power to you. I am not good at putting on lashes. But what I do like to do is treat my real lashes like fake lashes. So I will build up the ends of them more to make it look like a cat eye look. So let me get my mirror out again so I can do that. And then we put on some lip gloss and we're finally done guys. Let me just double check and make sure that I got the mascara to the corner here. Okay. It's looking good. Now I can go back in and really like be dramatic with this corner part of my lash. Using the side that has the comb because I want it to look more like a cat eye situation. I could have also used the clear mascara on this half of my eye too late now though <laughs> I've already put this one on so I'm going to keep building up the corners of my eye but I'm going to dip the wand in for some more application as well it's coming though Am I saying that this is the best mascara? No, but it's pretty good. There's other mascaras that would have already achieved what I'm trying to do. Like the wow, I think that was a big thing on Instagram. I think it was like wow lashes or something like that. But I'm only sticking with clean brands right now. So let me just continue to try to build up the edges some more for more drama. I'm looking around to see if I remembered. I didn't. I left it in the other room. It's okay. I actually did buy this little eyelash comb thing from Amazon. So you can go through and comb out the different lashes so the mascara doesn't clump and you get an even better result. I don't know why that requires so much concentration, but it does. It always does. This is why people go off camera. I'm going to do this other side. Just a few more coats for this other side. There's also some other tricks if you're like me and you don't like to wear lashes. You could prep your lashes with the eyelash primper, which I didn't do. I feel like when I do it, it helps a little bit, but I always have these one or two lashes you can see at the end that do what they want to do. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm not going to pluck them out, so I just let them do what they want to do. And then if I don't put on, like, the one time my friend put lashes on me, it was my lashes were competing with the lashes because my lashes are curly. So I'd have to find lashes that were the right texture. Plus, I only like the ends exaggerated. So they would have to be clusters that could match up. But this is pretty much it, guys. Uh, I think that looks dramatic, and I can see that the ends look 
more of a cat eye type situation, which I definitely love the look. If you can achieve this with your falsies, big up to you. <laughs> Because I just, I'm just not there. <laughs> I'm just not there. Only thing else we have to do is put on our gloss. I was very surprised. I think my sister and I, we were at CVS. The sticker's still on here. And this is the CVS. It's Maybelline New York gloss. And the gloss says that it has hyaluronic acid inside of it. And this, well, we picked up like a couple different colors. This color is 012 Opal. But again, it's got like a peachy tone to it. It's about my third time saying this, but it's my undertone, guys. If you want to know what makeup is going to look good with you, always default to your undertone. You can never go wrong if you wear colors that match your undertone. If you wear colors that don't match your undertone, you're always going to look a little crazy. Now, this is a completed look in my opinion. I could try to take it another step further with this one other product, which is the Thrive Cosmetics Brilliant Eye Brightener. I love this thing, but I don't think it got a clean rating, guys. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I love it because I it just is a nice, youthful look to it in my opinion. I can show you what it looks like. I can put on just a little bit for you just to brighten up my eye corners, but I threw away the other ones, but it was really hard for me to let this go because it looks so good. <laughs> it looks so good. Just let me just put a little. A little in the corner. And that's really like the finishing look right there. And for me, like this just set this off a whole other level because it looks like a beautiful metallic, you know. Like if I was getting married, I would I would want these colors on if I was getting married, if I was going to a function. It was just the outfit that you wear with it. For the passport pictures, you can't be too jazzy. So I'm just wearing a, a simple black tee. But I'm making sure that my face has dimension to it. I might be a little pressed and try to slick down a couple baby hairs. <laughs> but this is a look, guys. And this is the last item I just added. And it comes in multiple colors. But this one is called Betty. I guess that's the color. Betty. It's a pretty metallic blue color. Thrive Cosmetics. Unfortunately, I don't think this one has a clean rating. But it comes in like a champagne gold a super almost white shimmer one, a rose gold, this blue, and I think another. I think it came in like five or six different colors. I just couldn't let it go because to me, I'm like, if there's one product that I love the most, like even if I didn't put any eyeshadow on and I just kept my face entirely neutral, I would still want this just in the collar, in the corner of my eyes, just to give it a pick me up. This in the corner of the eyes, foundation all over, a little mascara, lip gloss, still a little blush, and a little bronzer. I would still wear that. I would still wear it. I would still do it. They do have in this Honest Beauty palette this light one, but you see I didn't use it for that because I just don't think it was as, as effective as the Thrive Cosmetics. Brilliant eye. This is good, though, for smoothing out the other colors so that your blends look Nice, nice and soft and it doesn't look like 80s old school harsh transitions you're looking for softness you're looking for smoothness all over but this is the completed look guys i hope you all like it i know it's been a minute this video is so long but thank you for your patience thanks for staying tuned i promise to have more videos recorded for you more looks but everything around the challenge, like around the channel, and, ah, around the channel, like I said, is moving in a more holistic type of direction with the inspiration from the app Yuka Y U K A. This is not a sponsored video. I'm just telling you about it because I'm on a holistic journey, and I'm looking forward to using more clean products that won't be endocrine disruptors and those type of things. So, please. Please, please, please hit the like button, subscribe, share with your friends, share with your family. Leave comments below if you like some of the products, you never heard of the products, 
leave your comments. I respond. I'll follow you back. This, this YouTube channel is open for all. And I hope you, most importantly, I hope you enjoyed the makeup. I hope you learned something and that this was beginner friendly. Because I still say that anytime I do makeup, for, in my opinion, it's always beginner friendly. I don't consider this advanced. I feel like anyone can do this. And it's easy to replicate, which is why I like it and why I enjoy it so much. And anything I learn, I'm sharing with you. Just like I told you earlier, I didn't know about silicone-based products versus water-based products. But now that I know, <laughs> I will not be having no crazy cakey looking situations ever again. And I hope you guys enjoy the knowledge as well. And I'm going to link those two videos. I know I find I, always Aaliyah. She's on YouTube. So I'm definitely going to be able to find her video. But the video with the blush. I hope I, hope I saved it on TikTok so I can share that with you all. So I can add that below in the comments as well as the video on water base versus silicone based products. Thank you all for watching. It's your girl Keisha Hutch. Have a great day guys. Bye.